In order to fully and permanently eliminate binge eating, emotional eating, a disordered relationship with food, then there are two key pieces to the puzzle. The first is rewiring the way the habit is stored in the brain rewiring the survival brain, which is everything that we spoke about in the last video. And when we work with our coaching clients, we teach them a process that we call the RAP process, which is an incredibly fast and powerful way to do that. Now, the second key piece of the puzzle is resolving all of those underlying emotional blockages and struggles and internal conflicts that have either created binge eating in the first place or certainly are perpetuating it and keeping it alive. Because if you're like, most of our clients, in addition to your struggles with food, there's also this undercurrent of a whole host of internal struggles, which can include things such as low self-esteem, low self-worth, not feeling good enough, perhaps upsetting events from the past that you can't seem to move past, fear of failure, fear of being judged or criticized, fear of other people's opinions, perfectionism, overanalyzing, overthinking, people pleasing, rumination, chronic worry, negative body image, monkey mind. Now, all of our clients are busy. They have demanding jobs. They've often got a team depending upon them or perhaps a busy business that they're running. And many of them, in addition to that, they've also got a busy home life, perhaps a family, maybe with some children involved. However, the true reason why people struggle with chronic, ongoing stress and overwhelm is not because of all of those externals, it's because of the internals. Because an entire day spent in low self-worth, not feeling good enough, perfectionism, overthinking, overanalyzing, people-pleasing, chronic worry, rumination. By the end of the day, it leaves you burnt out, exhausted, and in desperate need of release. And what's the fastest way that you've learned to give yourself that sense of release? Food and drink. Now, so far in the last video, we spoke about targeting the habit directly, which is rewiring the survival brain. However, if we ask somebody to do that on its own without also addressing underlying emotional struggles like low self-worth and perfectionism, then it's kind of like asking somebody to overcome their addiction to painkillers whilst also simultaneously subjecting them or leaving them in constant ongoing physical pain. Can it be done? Yes, but chances are they're just going to remain stuck in survival mode. However, many people worry that overcoming these types of emotional or internal struggles is long and slow and painful and nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is that overcoming these types of issues, things like low self-worth, anxiety, not feeling good enough, chronic stress and overwhelm is incredibly fast when it's done right. And if you haven't overcome these types of struggles yet, that says nothing about you or your capabilities or your future and everything about the methods that you've been trying so far. Because we've been taught things like the answer is to dive into the past. But unfortunately, what we find is that the more you relive upsetting events, the more upset you become. We've also been taught things like the answer is to analyze the problem and ask the why question. Why do I struggle with low self-esteem? Where did this all come from? But again, what ends up happening is that you develop a detailed and intimate understanding of how and why you got stuck, but you remain stuck. Understanding the problem in detail doesn't make the problem go away. That's like understanding how and why your car broke down in detail. That doesn't mean that you have the tools, the skills, or the knowledge for how to fix it. That's an entirely different skill set. So the truth is that struggles like anxiety, low self-worth, chronic worry, these are not disorders or conditions. These are learned behaviors. Now, they've been learned unconsciously and accidentally without you even realizing it. However, nonetheless, they are learned behaviors. And equally, self-confidence, inner peace, assertiveness, inner strength, calmness, 
self-worth, self-love. These are also learned behaviors. So one of the key messages here, which is kind of ironic, is that in order to get rid of what you don't want, you don't need to get rid of what you don't want. You need to replace it with what you do want instead. Think of it in terms of learning a skill. Imagine that you're learning a musical instrument or a sport. In order to get rid of the bad habits that you may have developed, you don't need to dive into and analyze those bad habits in detail. Instead, you simply dedicate yourself to the habits and the skills that you want to replace them with. And what you don't want disappears all by itself. So in exactly the same vein, self-worth, as an example, isn't something that you have. It's not something that you have to find or discover. It's something that you do. It has a very clear strategy. And when you're doing that consistently, to the point where it's starting to become a habit, now things like low self-worth, not feeling good enough, self-doubt, insecurity, these things disappear all by themselves without you having to analyze them or understand where they came from. So when you finally understand that you are not flawed or broken, there's nothing wrong with you. Your nervous system is doing exactly what it is designed to do. You've simply developed some bad habits, patterns of thought and patterns of behavior that are not serving you. Now you can stop worrying about what's wrong with me and you can stop obsessing over what you're trying to get rid of and instead start dedicating yourself to what you want to replace it with. The skills, the patterns of thought, the patterns of behavior, the patterns of emotion that you want more of. And what you don't want disappears all by itself. This is when these types of internal struggles and emotional struggles and internal conflicts that may have been hanging around and you might have been struggling with for years disappear with extraordinary speed. So when you combine these two things now, what we discussed in the last video, rewiring the survival brain, combined with this, what this does is it gives you the emotional freedom to then rewire the survival brain. And when you put these two things together, that is the formula for creating a lifetime of freedom and joy, a lifetime of freedom from binge eating, emotional eating, compulsive eating, or a disordered relationship with food.